to you from the book of Genesis chapter number 37. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 18 and I'll read down through verse number 29. Genesis chapter 37 verse number 18 and it reads like this and when they saw him afar off now the him that they're talking about here is none other than Joseph when they saw him afar off even before he came near unto them they conspired against him to slay him now the they here are Joseph's brothers and they said one to another behold this dreamer cometh come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams and Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said let us not kill him and Reuben said unto them shed no blood but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat his coat of many colors that was on him and they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty there was no water in it and they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked and behold a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt and Judah watch us now and and Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we stay, if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned into the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. You know, today's songs, I didn't have anything to do with putting the songs together today. I didn't have anything to do with the song that Sister Wendy sang. But everything that we've sung today, I think, has just went so well with this message. And that tells me that I have found the heart of God for this service today. Under the leadership of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach to you a message that I believe God gave me. And I am going to do my best to deliver to you. The title of my message today is this, Ugly Praise. From the when we read the story of Joseph, there are some things that simply cannot be denied because the scripture makes them so very clear to us. Things like Joseph was chosen and anointed by God. Things like Joseph had a destiny that was given to him by God. You see, Joseph was favored by God. Joseph was favored by his earthly father. And God was definitely with Joseph. Now, now this sounds like a winning combination if you were to list all these things about me I'd feel pretty good about it so it seems as if and judging from this criteria that it looks like old Joseph has it made it seems like that he would be living the life of Riley you would expect to find his book under the lifestyles of the rich and famous by Joseph in today's society, in today's world, you might turn on your television and Joseph might have a reality TV show. But when we read the Bible, we find out that this same Joseph who had everything going for him, who was anointed by God, who was favored by his earthly fathers, and father and had so many advantages on this earth, but yet one day Joseph found himself in a pit. I want to stop right here for just a minute and tell you that if someone told you that when you became a, a Christian that all your problems would be over, and that you would never hurt again, and that you would never cry again, or that you would never suffer again, I'm here to tell you today that they were not being truthful to you. They were lying to you if they told you that. The psalmist David weighed in on this thought with his words recorded in Psalm chapter number 34 and verse number 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Did you notice that? Many, many, not just a few, but many are the afflictions 
of the righteous. But I would be remiss today if I did not read the rest of that verse for you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. The point I'm trying to make today in the first part of this message is that Christians have problems too. Sometimes Christians find themselves in a pit. Christians get sick just like non-Christians. Christians are in debt just like non-Christians. Christians have marital problems just like non-Christians do. Christians get their hearts broken just like non-Christians. Christians get in places they shouldn't be. Christians walk through dark places. Christians walk through dark valleys just like non-Christians do. Sometimes you fall in a pit. Sometimes you jump into a pit. And sometimes you are pushed into a pit. But regardless of how you got there, and regardless of why you are there, a pit is still a pit. And if you stay in that pit, then you will die. Dreams die in the pit by the glazer. Ministries die in a pit. Gifts, callings, marriages die in the pit. Reuben was the one who was responsible for Joseph's pit. We read it. It was Reuben that suggested that they throw Joseph in the pit. We don't know what happened. But whatever it was, we know this, that Reuben was there when Joseph was thrown into the pit, Brother Blake. But Reuben was not there when Joseph was taken out of the pit. The point is that Joseph was surprised. Um, excuse me, Reuben was surprised. Reuben was shocked because Reuben saw Joseph go into the pit. Reuben saw Joseph struggling and begging to be delivered from the pit. You say, come on, pastor. I've heard great things about Joseph. Joseph doesn't seem to be like the type of guy that would struggle when they were trying to put him in the pit. Really? Now, I've seen dramas before, and you have two of this story, and Joseph just goes, you know, like a little lamb to slaughter. Right to the pit. Really? I'm sorry, brother. David, I don't believe that. I don't believe that Joseph just went to the pit. Listen, I believe that some of those brothers of Joseph that day, Blake, went home with black eyes. Because as they were trying to grab him, he's throwing elbows. Get off of me. I believe that some of those guys went home with bruises on their shins because I believe Joseph was kicking I believe some of those boys went home with some broke toes because I believe that Joseph was stomping on some toes that day. As they were trying to get a hold of his legs to throw him in that pit. But here's Joseph's brothers, Reuben, the one who had convinced his brothers to throw Joseph in the pit in the first place. And now here is Reuben again and he's looking down into that same pit and he's looking expecting to see Joseph full of fear. He's looking to see a Joseph that's full of confusion. He's looking for Joseph who is stressing and crying and begging to be delivered. But there's one problem. Joseph is not there. Joseph is no longer in the pit. I've got a message for some that are here today. God is getting ready to do some things that's going to blow your mind. Hallelujah. I said that God is about to do some things. God is about to open some doors. God is about to perform some miracles that is going to knock our socks off. Some of you here have been living in a pit lately. There are some of your family, there are some of your friends that have been living in pits lately. 
And some have passed by you and they've looked at you down in that pit. And maybe even some of those who saw you there helped to put you in the pit. And they watched you struggle. And they have watched you as you pushed and scratched and clawed trying to climb your way out. You see, when they left you, they saw you in the pit. The last time that they saw you, you were in a pit of despair. The last time that they saw you, they looked down into that pit and they thought, wow. They sure are a mess But I've come to tell you today That your pit dwelling days Are about to come to an end Hallelujah Hallelujah. I've come to preach to you today Under the unction and the authority Of the Holy Ghost That soon and very soon Your time in the pit Is coming to an end I don't know exactly when it will be Maybe by the time that you lay your head down on your pillow today. Maybe by the time that you eat dinner tonight. Maybe by the time that I'm done preaching today. I don't know the day nor the hour that your personal pit excavation is going to take place. The only thing I will tell you is this. I know who your God is. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I know who your God is. I happen to have a personal, intimate relationship with your God. And I've been talking to Him lately. And I believe that our God is getting a little bit tired of you being in a pit. Uh, Our God is getting a little tired of one of His kids having to look up from the bottom of that pit. I'm here to tell you today. That view that you've been living with, that view from the bottom of that pit is going to change for you. I'm here to tell you today that you are coming out of that pit. Someone give the Lord a little praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what your pit is today. It may be a pit of debt. It may be a pit of sickness. It may be a pit of bondage. It may be a pit of addiction. It may be a pit of despair. It may be a pit of depression. It may be a pit of marital problems that look so deep and so dark and so impossible that you feel like giving up. It may be a spiritual pit. Uh huh. You may not feel God the way that you used to feel God. Maybe you're dry. Maybe you're discouraged. I don't know what your personal pit is today. Pits come in all different sizes. Pits come in all different shapes. I don't know what the pit is for you today. But I have a word from the Lord. David penned these words found in Psalm chapter 30 and verse number 5. One of my very favorite scriptures. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. You may be weeping in your pit right now, my friend. And that pit may seem dark. That pit that you're in right now may seem as dark as midnight. But listen to what David wrote. He said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Hang on, brother. Hang on, sister. Hang on, young person. Hey, stare deep into the darkness. And you'll see just over the horizon, daylight is coming. And joy cometh in the morning. Woo! Hallelujah. You see, Reuben came back to the pit, Blake, where he last saw Joseph. But Joseph wasn't there anymore. There are some people that thought that they knew you pretty good. There are some of your friends and some of your co-workers that thought they know all about you and think that they know you. Some of your family, both spiritual and natural, thought they knew where to look for you. Some have even talked about the pitiful condition that you're in in your pit. And like Reuben, they've come back to the pit looking for poor, poor you. 
Some of your friends, some of your co-workers, some of your family have come back to your pit thinking that they would look, be able to look down at you and talk about how pitiful you look there in your pit. But I want you to know that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yesterday you were in a pit. Yesterday it looked like you were going to die in the pit. Yesterday it felt like you were going to die in a pit. But if a young man named Joseph could be here today and stand in this pulpit, I believe that old Joseph would have a word for all of us. And that word would be, don't die in the pit. Uh-huh. That you don't die in the pit. That fall that you had when you fell in doesn't have to be fatal. That fall into the pit does not have to be your last hurrah. David uh, Joseph would say, Don't die in the pit. Don't quit dreaming. Don't quit dreaming, even though you're in the pit. Don't quit believing. Don't quit trusting. Even though you're in the pit, don't quit expecting. Because you see the same God that pulled Joseph out of the pit is the same God that's going to pull you out of the pit. Yes, yes. I said the same God that pulled Joseph out of the pit, that blessed Joseph is going to be the same God that's going to reach down and pull you out. Hallelujah. Look. It looked like Joseph was going to die in that pit. He didn't know what was going on. It felt like Joseph was going to die in the pit. But through a turn of unexpected circumstances, Brother Glazer, in just a matter of minutes, Joseph was out of that pit and back on solid ground. Oh, listen. I'm here to tell you that God is going to turn it around for you. If you've been struggling, if you've been wondering if God is even there, if you've been wondering, does God even see me in my situation? I'm telling you that God is going to turn it around for you. I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't know when God is going to do it. And watch this now. I don't know who God is going to use to turn it around for you. But under the authority of the Holy Holy Ghost, you need to know that your God is going to turn it around for you. In fact, I believe that He's already in the process of turning it around for somebody in this place today. Hallelujah. If we learn anything, if we learn anything from the stories in the Bible, we learn that our God is a God who specializes in turning things around. I'm not going to get into them today, but think of Job and of Daniel and of the three Hebrew children and of Jonah. Think about that woman at the well who had fallen into a deep pit of sin, but just one encounter with Jesus Christ and she came out. Think about the woman who was thrown at the feet of Jesus, accused of adultery and sentenced to death, but just one encounter with Jesus and she came out. Oh, hallelujah. Think about the day that Jesus came upon a woman who had been in a pit of sickness and disease for 12 long years. But one encounter with Jesus and that woman was pulled from her pit and walked free of her blood disease that she had. And she walked free for the rest of her life. Our God is a God who specializes in turning things around. Oh, hallelujah. From Genesis to Revelation, God is turning it around. And if you haven't been convinced yet, all you have to do is look in the mirror. Oh, listen, some of us were thieves. Some of us were liars. Some of us used to use drugs. Some of us used to do a lot of things, things that you would not want mentioned from this pulpit today. Amen. I believe that. But you see, there was a, that was the old man. That was the BC man. That was the before Christ man. But since Jesus, since Jesus Christ came into my life, I have had a turnaround. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Since Jesus Christ came into your life, you have had a turnaround. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Thank God. The old man becomes new when Jesus Christ comes in. Thank God. The old things are passed away. They're gone. Old things become new when Jesus Christ comes in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a, if you still wonder if God can turn your situation around, just look in the mirror. Think back to what you look like before God came into your life. Hallelujah. And you'll see that God is a God that specializes in turnarounds. Thank you, Lord. Listen, watch this. Look what happened when God turned Joseph's pit experience around. It happened suddenly. It didn't take months. It didn't take weeks. It didn't take days. It didn't even take hours. One minute Joseph was in the pit. One minute Joseph was in the dark. One minute it was terminal for Joseph. One minute it looked like the end. And suddenly everything changed. Suddenly, I said suddenly, Joseph was standing in the sunshine. In an instant, everything changed. Oh, in one minute, the situation, the dilemma that seemed like would be his last was over and done and behind him. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God wants you to know that you are standing on the verge of a suddenly in your life. Oh, you're standing on the verge of a sudden lift, suddenly that's going to change everything for you. Peter fished all night, but the glazer caught nothing. But in one act of obedience, suddenly he went from nothing to having too much. Oh, in one instant, Peter went from empty nets to breaking nets. In one instant, suddenly he went from an empty boat to having a boat so full that it was sinking. From loss to profit. From weeping to rejoicing. From being a loser to becoming a winner. Suddenly. Somebody snap your fingers. Just like that. That's how fast. Suddenly. Let me get back to Joseph for just a minute. I want you to notice something. At the lowest point in Joseph's life, both physically and spiritually, God stepped in. Watch this now. Genesis chapter 37, verses 26 and 27. And Judah, notice, and Judah said to his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Watch this now. Judah Judah got him out of the pit. Mm. It wasn't Joseph's coat of many colors that got him out. It wasn't the anointing that got him out. It wasn't even the dreams that he had that got him out of the pit. It was an old, ugly Judah that got Joseph out of the pit. You say, Pastor, you don't have any idea whether Judah was ugly or not. You're right. I don't. But for the purposes of my message today, I'm going to assume that he was. I do have a 50-50 chance, you know. But it was an old, ugly Judah that got Joseph out of his pit. Oh, this is good. Do you know what Judah means? Do you know what Judah means? Watch this now. This is good. Watch this. Judah means praise. Woo! Hallelujah. I said that the name Judah means praise or to praise. So if Judah got Joseph out of his pit of despair and trouble, that means that praise was the thing that got him out of his pit of trouble. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Reuben got him in, but Judah got him out. Reuben got him in, but praise got him out. 
Listen, it doesn't matter how you got in the pit. It doesn't matter who put you in the pit. It doesn't matter what it was that put you in the pit. I'm here to tell you today that it will be Judah that will get you out. I'm here to tell you that praise will pull you from the pit that you are in. Oh, hallelujah. (laughs) And in the next few minutes... You'll see that sometimes that Judah, that pit delivering praise will be ugly praise. You're saying you finally got there. I am. Sometimes there's going to be some ugly praise from the pit. Turn to your neighbor and say ugly praise. Ugly praise. You see, Joseph didn't really do anything other than have a couple of dreams to end up in the pit. But Judah, praise, was responsible for getting him out. He may or may not have anything to do. You may or may not have had anything to do for to get you in that pit that you're in today. It doesn't really matter how you got there. What matters on a Sunday afternoon at Harvest Christian Ministries of Henderson is how are you going to get out of that pit? And I'm here to tell you today that if you want to get out of that pit, it starts with Judah. It starts with praise. Praise got Joseph out of his pit. And praise will get you out. Watch this now. But you might be saying, Pastor... I can't praise God right now. Don't you know, Pastor? Can't you see, Pastor? I'm in a pit. Things are bad. Things are dark, Pastor. I can't praise God right now. Things are too rough for me. I am in a pit. I can't praise God. I'm in such a deep pit of depression that I can't even lift my voice in praise. I can't even lift my hands in praise, much less clap my hands in praise. I'm in a pit. Pastor, I cannot praise God right now. I know. I know. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're saying. I've been there. I've been there. We've all been there. It's hard to push through troubles to praise. It's hard to push through trials to praise. It's hard to push through turmoil and struggle to praise. I get that. Believe me, I really do. But somehow, somehow we've got to get our praise on if we want to get out of the pit that we're in. I understand That praise from the pit is hard. I understand that praise from the pit is difficult. I understand that praise from the pit may not be as pretty as mountaintop praise is. Uh Uh-huh. I understand that pit praise is rough. Pit praise may not hit every note just right. Pit praise may not clap on the right beat all the time. Pit praise may not sing all of the right words all the time. Let's face it today. Pit praise is not pretty praise. The fact is that pit praise is really ugly praise. What do you mean ugly praise? All right, watch this. Pretty praise is when you sing and worship God when the battle's over and you have won. That's pretty praise. Ugly praise is when you praise even when you can't lift your sword to fight. Not even one more time, but yet the enemy is still coming at you to fight you and still you praise Pretty praise is when you sing and worship and praise God the day after the doctor announces that you are cured of cancer and he tells you that it was a miracle. That's pretty praise. Ugly praise. Pit praise is when you praise and worship your God even after you have fought through your sickness and weeks and months and years and your doctor has told you that there's nothing else that can be done but yet you praise that is ugly praise I'm starting to feel an anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place right now listen pretty praise is when you sing and worship and praise God when your marriage is restored and the family is mended 
Pretty praise is when you praise God when you've got a good job. Pretty praise is when you praise God when you've got a good retirement, when you've got money in your wallet, when you've got money in the bank. That's pretty praise. I'm here to tell you anybody can do pretty praise, Brother Glazer. But hear me now. Let me preach to you for just a minute more. It takes something to shout in the face of the devil. It takes something to praise from the pit. It takes something to do ugly praise. It takes something to praise God in the face of a bad doctor's report. It takes something to shout when you don't have two nickels to rub together. It takes something when you're going through the fire to lift your voice and your your hands and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It takes something to do ugly praise. How many know what I'm talking about? We got any pit praisers today? We got anybody that needs to praise from the pit? Listen, I'm almost done, but listen to me. Pretty praise is good. Pretty praise is great. We all need the times in our lives when we can give pretty praise to God because that means that those are the good times for us. But let's face it now. Let's just get real today. We will all have our times in the pit. I said that we will all have our times of trouble. I said that we will all have our times of turmoil. We will all have our times of struggle. We will all have our pit times. And it's in those pit times that we need to understand that our praise will need to go from pretty praise to ugly praise. Listen. Ugly praise is when you praise God with a certain desperation. Ugly praise is when you praise your God when you're at your worst. The word ugly means very unattractive or unpleasant to look at, offensive to the sense of beauty. It means displeasing in appearance. Ugly is messy, offensive, and objectable. You see, sometimes ugly praisers don't praise in a way that's pleasing to everyone, Brother Glazer. You see, sometimes ugly praisers get a little loud. Sometimes ugly praisers get a little bit undignified. Sometimes ugly praisers can get a little messy. Pit praisers, ugly praisers are praisers who are desperate for God to turn their situation around. Pit praisers, ugly praisers, don't worry about their hair or their clothes. You don't understand, God, I just paid $12 to have this suit cleaned. I keep messing up today. Oh, that might be the words from a pretty praiser, but that's not the word from an ugly praiser because ugly praisers don't care. Come on, that's right. That's right. Ugly praisers don't worry that someone will talk about them. They don't worry that someone will see them dance for the Lord or leap for joy or run for joy. You see, pit praisers, ugly praisers have nothing else to lose. Pit praisers, ugly praisers are already at their lowest point. Pit praisers, ugly praisers know that the thing that is going to start to get them out of their pit is Judah. And Judah is praise to their God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pit praisers will praise their God even if it is ugly. I'm talking about ugly praise from the pit. Listen, I know that praising God when things are bad doesn't make any sense. I know that ugly praise might be offensive to some. But listen, God wants your ugly praise today. God wants you to praise Him through your tears. 
God wants you to praise him through your groans. God wants you to praise him while your heart is breaking. He wants praise through your bloodshot eyes. God desires for you to lift your hands in praise. Even when they feel like they've got hundred pound weights on them. God wants ugly praise. Oh God, God desire your, desires your praise even when it doesn't make any sense. God wants loud praise. God wants crazy praise. God desires for us to praise Him even when we feel like we're going through hell on earth. He wants praise even when you don't feel a thing. Amen. Oh, look, don't wait. Until everything is perfect in your life to praise Him. Don't wait till everything is perfect in your life to praise Him. I heard choirs sing a song entitled, Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. (laughs) I know some of us are in a battle right now. But I want you to hear this gray haired preacher today. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. I know some of us are in a pit today. I know, I know. But hear this gray haired preacher today when I tell you don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to tell you that he desires your ugly pit praise because he's going to use that ugly pit praise to pull you out. I'm closing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Glazer. Joseph lost everything, I mean, Job lost everything he had. Nearly. God did leave him his wife. No comment. I would hope if he took everything from me, he would leave me my wife because she's the best thing that ever happened to me. But Job lost nearly everything that he had. Job lost houses Job lost barns Job lost crops Job lost his animals Job even lost his children Job lost almost everything His heart was breaking into a million pieces Job had more tragedy Job was in the deepest pit That no human being ever should have to endure But in the middle of it all In the middle of the pit that he was in, Job gave God ugly praise. Watch this now. The Bible says that Job arose. He rent his mantle or he tore his mantle. The Bible says that he shaved his head and he fell down on the ground and he worshipped. I'm sure... Job was pretty that day. Ugly praise. Job worshipped through tears. Job worshipped through groans. Job worshipped with a broken heart. He worshipped through his pain, through his confusion. Job gave God an ugly praise. And God gave Job a beautiful future. Hallelujah. Job's worship kept him connected to his destiny. And in the end, God blessed him with more than he had before. God restored everything to Job and gave him double. Yes, Job got out of his personal pit and it started with ugly praise. Someone give the Lord a hand clap right now. (laughs) Ugly praise from the pit. Ugly praise from the pit. Let's stand together. We don't have the benefit. Watch this now. We don't have the benefit of choosing the problems and the trials and the afflictions that come our way most of the time. Some of the time we, we do things to ourselves. That's true. But oftentimes we, we don't we can't choose the problems. 
we can't choose the trials. We can't choose the afflictions. None of us would choose family problems or sickness or the loss of a loved one or false accusations or betrayal. None of us would choose our pit. Hear me now. None of us chooses the pit that we are in. But watch this. I can't choose my pit. But I can choose to praise. Oh, I can choose to praise. Psalm chapter 149 verse 5 and 6. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let me tell you something today. I may be in a pit of trouble. It might be ugly, Brother Glazer, but I choose to praise because I know that my deliverer is coming. Woo, hallelujah. I may be in a pit of pain today. Pain may be wrecking my body from my head to my feet. And it might be ugly praise. But I choose to praise because I know that my healer is coming. Woo, hallelujah. I may be in a pit of life storms today. And it might be ugly. But I I choose to praise because I have a promise from God. My God promised me that weeping may endure for the night. But joy, joy comes in the morning. Lift your hands right now and praise the Lord. Oh, we got anybody that needs to do a little bit of pit praising today? I don't feel like it, preacher. Well, it's time to praise from the pit. Hallelujah. Let's sing.